good evening, Hello, and this everybody. is Wednesday night Bible study. Woo. We're starting tonight uh, talking about God's big picture, and it's based on the book by Vaughn Roberts. If you'd like to go out to Amazon, it's on there. I don't remember how much it is, but um, well, if that's something there, you want to look at, but you're more than welcome <clears throat> to buy one to go along with us. And I think it's on Kindle, too. I think it's on Kindle, e-book, too. E-book, if you like that. So, um, but we're doing unit one tonight, and I wanted to share a story that he starts off in the book. Sorry. It's 8 o'clock. It's 8 o'clock. Okay. So, we wanted to share with you um, one story that starts off. It said there was a police officer, and I think he was in England because he was called something else, but he went to an elementary school, and he was asked to cover one of the classes on scripture. And so he goes in and he asks the kids, um, what, who, who knocked down the walls of Jericho? And so the kids just sat there real quiet and they didn't say anything. And suddenly this little boy raises his hand and he says, Sir, I don't know who did, but I didn't. It wasn't me, so you can't blame me. <laughs> and so he, the officer leaves the, the classroom and he goes to see the headmaster, the principal of the school. And he, he's all upset about this little boy being, you know, talking back to him, kind of. And so he tells the principal, you know, this little boy said it wasn't him. And so the, 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 the principal says, well, you know, I don't really know who did it, but I'm sure that we can figure it out together. Who, walked, who know, whoever knocked down the walls of Jericho. <laughs> so he writes this letter to the school board, or he tells the school board about it because they need to find out who wrote, knocked down the walls of Jericho. And he gets this letter back. And the letter reads along the lines of, We are so sorry to hear about the walls. And we will do what we can to figure out um, or get, get the money to pay you to fix the walls of Jericho. And that makes you kind of think. That's where we are in the world today. I mean, most kids, people <clears throat> younger than us, you know, don't really, didn't really grow up in Sunday school. A lot of churches don't even have Sunday school in the morning yeah. anymore. And... So teaching those Bible stories to our kids is so super important when we talk about uh, the basics of who God is and relating to God. Yeah, and I want to add into there the, the whole narrative, um, you know, the stories that are compiled in the Bible. Mm-hmm. It, um, it is infallible word of God. Exactly, it really is. And the First collection Timothy of the stories that, right? is inspired, as, uh, <laughs> that's right, and, and they're inspired by the Holy Spirit. And you have over these uh, thousands of years and, and different people of different walks of life, different geographic locations, all composing mm-hmm. this cohesive story. And and the story is all about Jesus Christ. And, and I'm going to share a scripture in Luke, in the book of Luke, chapter 24 and verse 44, just to kind of help kind of mm-hmm. pull this That's idea good. into this. Because really the Bible, it, there is this big picture that God's trying to, to tell us through the Old Testament and the New Testament. Um, verse 44, Luke 24. Then he said to them, These are the words which I speak to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning mm-hmm. me, concerning Jesus himself. So I just wanted to throw that in there before we get into the where we're going to start in the book of Genesis. So if we look at the very beginning, and if we take into account the whole book that is the Bible, not thinking of it as 66 books, I mean, yes, that's what it's made of uh, by countless authors. I mean, there's a lot of them. But if you think about how the flow goes, I mean, it goes over thousands of years these books were written. And if we think and take into account... That God's picture, God flows throughout every chapter and every book in the Bible. Uh, we look at uh, that, that there's 66 books, I've already said that, mm-hmm. but there's one author. That author was God. If you look at 2 Timothy 3.16, so I'm going to turn there real quick. 2 Timothy 3.16, and of course I went too far. Let's see who's going to get there first. <laughs> Oh, 2 Timothy. <laughs> Cheater. 316. I'm here too. It says all scripture <laughs> is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Mm-hmm. 
So it's God breathed. Even though man wrote it, he put the pen to it. God is the one who authored the whole book. And we know that the whole subject throughout, even through Genesis and Exodus, Leviticus, you can see bits of Jesus throughout every chapter, every book of the Bible. He is what the whole story is about. If we talk about in, in the school, we talk about the setting of a story and the characters of the story. There's a lot of characters in the story. But if we talk about the one subject that the whole Bible that is, you can see the threads mm. woven through a, wo- a piece of art or the threads through even a piece of g- really pretty clothing, you know, there's always a central theme. Well, our central theme is Jesus. That's right. That's right. And so, uh, but we look at the one story, God's plan to save the world through Jesus. Yeah. From the very beginning, he created man. So that's, we're gonna, that's where it's going to yeah. lead us off at here at the very beginning. Um, and to start the study, this whole mm-hmm. starting thread through Genesis 1, and obviously everybody, um, you would assume everyone knows the creation. That's true. Um, and that's the reason we felt like it was important to kind of go through this whole 66 books of the Bible and the kind of this 30,000 foot mm-hmm. overview to let everybody be reintroduced right. to it for those who've gone through it. Uh, who may know it, uh, and but introduce it to people who are new to the scripture, new to the Bible, new to the stories. And some of the stories may not even have ever heard before. That's true. And we don't want to get too deep, and we're not no, going to look no. at between the verses, and we're not going to look at what different religions mm-hmm. think about it, or different even thoughts of Christianity think. We're just looking at God's word. Yeah. So we start in Genesis 1-1, and we realize that God alone is eternal. He created it. He, he exists outside of time. His word At his word, the very universe was created. Now, however that happened, that's up to him. You know, we don't know we weren't there, but we do know that God created the world. He is the creator, and he is the rightful ruler of everything. Um, we can look on, if you read through Genesis 1-1, there's the creation. Now, so what are, there's several parts of this that I want to take to, into consideration what are some things that we read through Genesis 1-1 or gen- through Genesis chapter 1 that is repeated? Just think about that for a minute. What is repeated through those scriptures? So what's one of them? One of them is um, God said. And he says it a lot. Uh, yeah, he says that a lot. There's several verses where it said God said. Um, and it was so. Mm-hmm. So we see God see, saying right. something and it was so. In fact... One of the translations, I, I love the way that it reads, it, when he created light, um, the translation says, he just said, light be, and mm. it was. Um, so, I mean, just spoken word, just God speaking, and every time he speaks, just creating And power. that takes into the account that we were creating, and I'm getting ahead a little bit, but we're <laughs> creating in God's image. Yeah. And, and, and that is also something that's repeated according to the scripture mm-hmm. in Genesis 1, uh, one and two, two and three, um, separated was right, in there. He right. he separated things, the, the light water from the, the light, water, from, yes. light from darkness, land from the water. Uh, made those boundaries, and they would never cross over those boundaries. Isn't that amazing? Mm-hmm. Even to this day, we see the law and order that God's put in place still trucking along, if you will, the way He designed it. And there's nothing in this world, that nothing so out cool. of this world can change that. I mean, you think about it. You look at the earth. If you stand at the North Pole, you're standing upright. Mm-hmm. If you go to the South Pole, guess mm-hmm. what? You're standing upright again, but you're opposite. But it's all in God's plan, and it all works so cool. Beautiful. Um, we can look at, or it's also repeated, there was evening and morning. Yeah. And that helps us. Sometimes we can think about, you know, it's been a bad day. I'm ready to go to bed. <laughs> you know, <sighs> There's a new day coming. There's evening and there's morning. And yeah. thank God, you know, later in Scripture it says God's mercy is new every day. His grace is renewed every day. Sorrow may endure for the night, but joy comes but joy in the morning. Comes. Hallelujah. Yes. That's awesome. <laughs> That's great. And it says uh, we don't need to make this an exhaustive search. We just need no. to look at Scripture. And if we stand on Scripture... Alone, uh, I had a grandmother, my great grandmother. Oh, yeah. She, uh, she was a little crazy. Loved her. I mean, I love this woman. I only knew her when she was saved. But they said when she, before she was saved, she was on the really crazy side. But when she got saved, she took the Bible literally. 
she would put the Bible in the middle of the floor and she'd stand on it. And people would, what are you doing? And she'd say, I'm standing on the Word of God. Well, you know, how much more plain do we need to get? I can stand on the Word of God too. You know, Mary, even in her heart, as we get closer to Christmas here, Mary pondered things in her heart. She stood on the Word of the angel. Mm. Yeah. And, and I'm, again, I'm getting off track. But if we think about God's Word, God's Word in Genesis, mm. and God said, let and God said, let. Ooh, if we just took those words into our own hearts, and if we step back and said, well, and God said, Why don't let. we just let God be mm. God Ooh, and come do on. what he's going to do come in our lives? Mm, that'll preach right there. So in this chapter, <laughs> let's look at what do we learn about God. Mm. There's two main points that I want to point out that we learned about God. Okay. We learned that God is sovereign, yeah. and he is all very he's powerful. He's made everything. I mean, made it all. Muhammad who? Mm. Wait, God created him. Oh, okay. You know, Everything Buddha, what? God created him. Come on. God created mankind. All he us. is above mankind. Mm -hmm. He is He is God. He's just above and beyond. Uh, we just finished and up that also, the But that too. also, yeah. But also uh, in there that, that God is very powerful. Mm -hmm. Because right. just being able to speak things into existence says something about the fact of his power, mm -hmm. uh, that who he is. Um, that his presence, his spirit moves upon, the Holy Spirit moves oh, yeah. upon. But yet when he when he speaks in the scripture, he says, let us do this, let us mm -hmm. do that. And, and um, you know, we see the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit working in tandem, even in the beginning of right. the creation. In fact, Paul said that Jesus was slain before the foundation of this world. Mm. So even knowing that, there was a plan, there was a plan that thread pulling through. There was a plan for man's salvation, even, yes. even at the very beginning yes, of time. Yes, exactly. So what do these verses tell us about God's creation? About me and you and the animals and the trees? Well, one thing I think um, for sure that you see repeated over and over, that God would say when things were created, it is good. It's good. It, it's good. And there's so many good things um, in this world that God created. Uh, there's, just sit back, you know, the, the old saying, he need to take time to smell the roses. But literally, have you, have you stopped lately to watch the sunrise? Have you, have you stopped to watch the sunset? Have you enjoyed just listening to a gentle rain and smelling the, the mm -hmm. cleansing of those raindrops in the air? Um, just That's enjoying good. the crackling of a fire? Uh, you know, it's so many good things. But he made all of these things in this world for us to enjoy. Um, and, and I'm going to tell you, um, some of the things in, in life, even work, even work that he's given us here, talking about Ecclesiastes, or, but it is for us to enjoy. The, the two things God gives every man in life is the food that we eat right. and the work for us to enjoy, the right. labors of our hands. Um, even in that, he wants us to be fulfilled. And I just, I tell you, that's a good father. It is That's good. a good father. And everything, good. everything he made is good, he says. It's all good. And you know, I like the fact that matter is what he created. From nothing. From nothing. <laughs> Glory. And so with Glory, God, yeah. matter matters. Mm. You that's matter. Good. I don't care who you are, where right. you come from, where you've been, what you've gone through, what you plan on going through. You matter. You matter to God. Your life matters. Your your the things that you're struggling with, your troubles you face, those matter to Him. Exactly. As well. And I'm gonna tell you, I love the scripture in Psalm 34. It says the true the the afflictions of the righteous are many, but the Lord delivers them from them all. That's right. That's right. And I'm gonna tell you, take heart in that. God knows yes. exactly where you are. And I don't know if this is speaking to somebody that's mm -hmm. gonna watch this video in tonight or in the future. But let me just share this with the power of the Holy Spirit. That if you're facing a, a struggle in your life, in your own weakness, maybe you're facing something that in your life that you think, you know, this is everything bad happens to me. Um, maybe, maybe things you touch, you feel like it just kind of breaks before your very eyes. Um, the Lord's concerned for you, and right. He loves you, and and He knows exactly where you are. Yes. And the Scripture says that in your moment of weakness. In your weakness, his strength is made perfect. Right. And we're talking about a powerful God. 
mm-hmm. that he put this world in rotation uh, in orbit around the sun. If anything was off, science has proven if any of this is off, the Earth spins too faster than it does mm-hmm. or slower than it does, that it, it'll have catastrophic right. impacts. But yet, he did all of this perfectly. perfectly. It was all good. And the enemy is the one who wants you to feel uh, disenfranchised, if you will, from God. He wants you to feel separated. He wants you to feel alone and isolated. But God is right there with you. And he wants you to realize that he knows exactly where you are and what your what your need is in your life. But he already knows the answer mm-hmm. and has the answer supplied ever before you can ever. speak That's the need. Right. So I just encourage you tonight just yes. to take it and give it to the Lord. Cast yeah, your cares the upon the Lord because he cares for you. Amen. Thank that's you for right. letting me share that. Uh, um, that's good. That's really good. Uh, another part of this in the creation story is we realize that creation is ordered. Just yes. like you were saying, there's not one little piece that has to be out of order. I mean, first day he did this, second day he did that. But if we keep reading, and if you were to read chapter 1 through the uh, chapter 2, verse 3, it's like one solid story. Mm-hmm. And you finish with, on the seventh day, he rested. Have you rested? Rest is important. Uh, it's immensely. Mm-hmm. I know that when I get tired physically, my brain doesn't function. My, right. you know, I just. You're apt to make more mistakes. Exactly. You're apt to be more irritable. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know that. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's just say, look, it was important for God to rest. Right. It's super and he important. set an example for us, really. Um, work is important, mm-hmm. but it's equally as important as the time of rest. And it's got to be balanced, too. Look how many days he worked compared to the days he rests. So you need to look at that as a model for yourself. The right. time you work, but also taking this time to rest. If you work hard, you should play hard. You should rest, and you should take the, the Sabbath off to rest and, and to worship God and, and just to enjoy all the things that he's blessed you with. And I believe that even in that, I know that there's a lot of first responders that have to work Sunday Mm -hmm. or Saturday, whatever you think Sabbath is, but I don't think it has to be a certain day. I think it is a moment of rest. I know I've always gotten a little irritated with you because you like to go work in the yard, and I'm not about working in the yard. I do. He loves it. But that's where he goes and communes with Jesus. He goes and gets into... Deep conversations. It is relaxing and real, to just work To me, in I would be a knot going out there. <laughs> but I come in and I want to, uh, I'll even gotten gotten where I like to cook. And if I can cook and get alone in my, in the kitchen and actually do some chopping, it it tends to help. Or re- go read a book. That to me is restful. For you, reading a book is mm-hmm. not going to do it. Uh-uh. Okay, so in <laughs> chapter two, and we're going to finish this up pretty quick. <laughs> yeah. But if we look at the relationships that are in chapters 1 and 2, there's three types. There's the relationship between God and humans. Yeah. So God wants to have a relationship with you. Absolutely. He wants to have a relationship with me and with Joe. And he wants us to have a relationship with each other. Um, our, our country and our world is trying to say that there's not a relationship just between a man and a woman. That's wrong. Because God's word says it. It's very plain. Let's look at uh, verse 25 of chapter 2. And man and woman were both naked and they felt no shame. When that is in unity, when a man and woman come together in unity, and I'm not just talking in in a sexual way. I'm talking about harmony in a connection. Yes. Um, Then there is a beauty there that it... There's no shame in it. There, to have that connection with someone that is really your other part. And I, and I know also that, that this is before sin enters into right. the world. Um, and so you're seeing a picture of what... The perfect what is, world. Yeah, what, what um, we were created for. Right. This fellowship with God, mm-hmm. this communion, and there's no shame. Think about the shame in people's lives today. Uh, there's there's so many things that God created, and they were good. The institution of marriage created by God. Mm-hmm. Um, there's you know all the things that go with that because God said He saw man, and it wasn't good for him to be alone. It wasn't good for people not to have fellowship and relationship, and especially in the sense of a spouse because 
the scripture says that the two shall become one flesh. Right. But to me, the flesh also encompasses the mind and the body exactly. and the and the and the whole being, the, the complete right. picture. Because when Donnie and I got married, we had that year of honeymoon, but I think that part was to getting used to each other. Right. But now we complete each other's sentences, as you can tell. <laughs> uh, but but I couldn't imagine my life without her. Yeah. And I hope that she's the same way. But, you know, when, when it's in a godly setting, Donnie submits to me, and I know for a lot of people in the political correct world, they go, oh, you know, you can't submit to a man. But... Think about this: of the way God set this up, the woman was God was create God created man first, but He also created woman as a helpmate. But let me let me just explain this for one second. Um, the woman was created as helpmate. Daniel submits to me as my as my wife, but as her husband, I die to her mm -hmm. needs. She may submit to me, but I'm a dead man walking for her. You see the difference? It might sound like, oh, she got to submit. I have to die. That means my interest, my everything that I do, is to make sure that this woman needs her met. Her her the things that that are most uttermost important for her in her walk in her life: security, mm -hmm. provision, um, being home for her, uh, fixing the toilet, uh, fixing the <laughs> roof, fixing the <laughs> roof, and maybe having someone fix the roof. But and and and, and the thing is. When the scripture talks about these things, you know, people look at this in such a natural, carnal way of looking at it. Right. But God designed us mm -hmm. to be total, mind, body, and spirit. And and when we serve God, we put him first. When we both walk in unity before the Lord, man, what a peace. I know, right? What a joy. It is. Um, you don't have to worry about so many things. Because we're working concern, at this as partnership. Yeah, that concern the world and people in the world and it and the strife. It's it's just not there. Yeah, Praise it, God. For yeah, that. that's true. That's true. I, I'm so excited about that. So I want to just close this up tonight uh, with a word of prayer. But I want to ask you to do do something for us in the comments below, if you will. I want you to add something that is a comment or a challenge that you've received tonight as we've talked. Um, have, have we changed your thinking on something? Or have we mm -hmm. challenged the way you've thought about something? Um, is there a behavioral issue that you want to change? Uh, if there's a prayer need that you have, yeah. please leave that in the comments. We want to pray with you about it. And if you are, um, if you're looking for that one person, we, we will do a video soon about finding that love that God has just for you. And I want to challenge you, though, that if you are in a marriage where your husband or your or your wife is not saved, don't give up on them. No, don't do that. Continue to submit to your husband. Continue to die for your wife. Right. And through that love, through that submissiveness to God, it will win them over. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, and there's a lot of covering there, the Scripture it says. Is. So when that other spouse serves the Lord when the other one's not. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm going to tell you, God hears your heart's cry. Yes, he does. God knows right where you are. And he created this world, everything in it. He put an order in place. And when we try to go against that, you know, um, Jesus kind of spoke to Paul on the road to Damascus all the time. Mm -hmm. And he said, why are you kicking against a goad? I mean, you know, you just can't do that. And sometimes there's things in your heart you say, Lord, I, I, I know that I'm going this way, but I should be going this way. That's the that's the unction, if you will, of the Holy Spirit. That's that's the, the directing, and that's that still small voice that's mm -hmm. in your heart. Listen to that. Um, listen to him. Right. Read this word and meditate on it. I just want to challenge you to do that. And and just just let us know, you know, maybe where you are in your walk. And um, and we'll be praying with you. We'll be praying for you. And I'm going to tell you what, we're, we're excited about the days is coming forward. And we're going to continue doing these studies right. on Wednesday night. And if, you're, and if you want to join the live discussion, uh, it's a little bit different setting. We kind of teach on this 
But when you're live on Wednesday night here at New Destiny we'll get Assembly, to discuss it's actually kind of a round table discussion. It's really good. Uh, so if you're in an area and you want to join, I mean, we're continually evolving into, a, uh, I guess, a more meaningful impact. And that's what we really want to do is have yes. an impact for the kingdom. So, so and if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, tonight is the night. Right yes. now is yes, the time. Indeed. There's not a better way. And another scripture talking about following God's path, Jesus will whisper to you, this is the way, walk in it. Amen. Amen. So let's pray. Thank you, Lord. I bless you, Jesus, Thank you, for, Jesus. Your, for your just mercy that you give us new Hallelujah. every day. Thank you that you saw mm -hmm. us when you created this world. Yes, Lord. You saw us. You knew with the path because Jesus, you already had a path plan for him before you even laid the foundations. So, Father God, I pray that this word will go alive in our hearts and that Satan cannot Bless. take it away. Lord, I pray Thank for peace for in every goodness. person's life that is watching Everyone, this tonight. Lord. And I ask, Holy God, for salvation to erupt in their hearts yes. and in their lives. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise and you glory. And in the mighty name of Jesus, we say, Amen. 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 Have Hallelujah. a good evening. We love you. you. Have a good night. God bless you.